Greetings radio people, welcome once more back to the shack. During the pandemic lockdown I've been spending my free time trying to learn a bit more about microcontrollers. I've been fascinated for some time about microcontrollers and what their capabilities are. Um, but I've been looking more at the STM32 range of microcontrollers and trying to understand what these things can do. More overly, I've also been very interested for some time in frequency control, so the kind of stuff that people do with GPS disciplining of oscillators or accurate frequency counting, that kind of thing. So I've been learning a bit more about the low-level programming of these microcontrollers because what you need to understand is that if you write a Hello World program or something using Arduino, then the environment is doing a whole bunch of stuff for you. So configuring a microcontroller to connect to a UART which will send serial comms to your PC or flash an LED involves configuring a whole bunch of different peripherals. And those peripherals are all, all usually very general purpose and can do lots and lots of different things. So this is an example of one of the timers that's inside the STM32 family of microprocessors. Generally they fall into three categories. There's a a general timer, a basic timer, sorry, which is just a counter or, or pulse generator. There's the advanced timers and there's also the general purpose timers. Again, very complex peripherals that can do lots and lots and lots of things. But I've been thinking about how I can actually set up a microcontroller to do the kind of frequency counting that we've just been talking about. So the basic theory would be that we take a microprocessor. In my case, I'm actually using one of these things called a nucleo board. Now, ST Microelectronics developed, uh, they, they, they produced a whole huge range of different microprocessors. And these boards are available for, I think, all, if not the majority of them. And they're, they're very, very competitively priced. In fact, I think they're probably cheaper than it costs to buy the bits to make one, simply to encourage software developers, embedded software developers, to use their stuff so that when the product gets to market, they sell lots and lots and lots of uh, microcontrollers. So these things are pretty cheap, and I've been using one of these along with the STM32 IDE to write some fairly low-level code. Now, there are two ways to access the if you like the peripherals and the low level stuff inside the microcontroller. One is called Kimsys, which is the ARM controller. So the stuff that's included within a general ARM processor is available through Kimsys. And then there's something called HAL, which is the hardware abstraction layer. And that gives you access to the STM specific stuff. This is an immensely complex topic and I don't begin to want this video to be a software lesson or a software tutorial, but just to give you some insight into the kind of things that go on in these things. Now, if I were to set up my microcontroller the way that this diagram is, if I were to take a GPS, and you can put these things into what's called stationary mode, which means they spend a lot more of their thinking time accurately doing timing rather than worrying about where on the planet they are. And that's the best mode to get the most accurate one PPS signal. And of course, one PPS stands for pulse per second. So you get a very, very accurate timing pulse out of these uh, GPS receivers. So I've got one of those sat on the bench generating a one pulse per second signal. The rising edge of that signal is configured to, to the input to one of the timers on the microprocessor. Now it's important to understand that once you set up and, and initialize a timer on a microprocessor, it just does its thing completely independently of the rest of the software or anything else that's going on. The timer is very much a standalone thing. So I've configured, in this case, it's timer three of this STM microcontroller to interrupt every, and I'll put N seconds in the demonstration, I'll show you it's every two, but realistically to get accurate, more accurate counting, you do that a lot longer, maybe every 16 seconds or 32 seconds. But what happens is after every count of two of these pulses, the way it's configured now, the software generates an interrupt, which gets passed to the interrupt handler. Now, the other thing that's going on is I've configured timer two to count the rising edges of an own controlled crystal oscillator that's running at 10 megahertz or thereabouts. And if you're not familiar with these devices, these are physical metal boxes with that heat up and warm up a crystal oscillator inside. And they have a tuning voltage that you can apply to it, which will bend the frequency either side of target only by a few hertz, but it allows you to set a very, very accurate uh, frequency. So if timer two is counting the 10 megahertz signal, and every time we get an interrupt from timer three, we just grab the number that timer two is counted to, we can then very easily in a main software routine figure out 
how many rising edges we've had from this signal in the number of seconds that we've got up here. So in my case, it's two. So I would expect, if this was exactly on frequency, there to be 20,000 rising edges every time we get this interrupt. And what you can then do, if that of course is a very, very accurate frequency counter, but if you then use your software to generate some algorithms, you can generate a pulse width modulated output, which is a, a mark space variable signal which you pass through a low pass filter to convert to a voltage, you can then control the tuning voltage. So depending on the results of your counting here, you can make decisions about altering the tuning of your oscillator to keep it incredibly accurate and stable. Now I think you could probably dedicate your entire life to writing algorithms around this um, software control of tuning voltages because you don't want jitter and you don't want it jumping too much and you, it, you know there's lots and lots of things to actually think about but in theory this is the way that we could configure a microcontroller either as a frequency counter or as a means of generating a tuning voltage to control an uh, oscillator so the ide that st micro provide is a, a true piece of genius and wonder all hail st micros now what it gives you is a graphical picture of the the processor the, the controller that you've targeted you select your controller or you can tell it that you've got one of these boards and it'll auto configure it for you but you can then decide which pins are going to do what and you can set up all the peripherals that you want in this case i've set up timer two to clock to clock to count an external signal as the clock source and to, and then down here you can set up all the different parameters that configure the clock now it's all incredibly complicated and not something that i want to cover the detail of in here but what i wanted to illustrate to you is that you can set up your configuration fairly graphically the software will then generate the code automatically for you and this for example is the code that configures the timer to count external pulses. You then, in your own, your own software, in the main user routine, you have to initialize that timer, which I've done here as an example. But there's a lot of things that this will do to help you. So this graphical environment is really useful. And I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials online if you're really interested in getting into the depth of how microcontrollers work and how you can configure them and how there are so many different options around this. As I said earlier, if you're using something like an Arduino IDE, a lot of this is hidden for, from you, but it also means that you don't have the flexibility to actually configure and set up the kind of peripherals that we need for this kind of high-speed counting. So let me give you a very quick demo of this slash up that I've set up on the running on the bench. As ever, if you like what I'm up to, I'd be very grateful if you could subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support. And a thumbs up on the video is always very welcome. So here's a total and complete lash-up of the theory on the bench. Um, what we've got here, we've got, this is the oven-controlled uh, crystal oscillator, which is outputting a sine wave, which is being conditioned by this chip here to convert it to a square wave, basically which is feeding the input of timer 2 of my microcontroller. Timer 3 of my microcontroller is taking the input, uh, the, the 1 PPS signal from this GPS, which is here. Uh, I've just got an external cable to an outdoor antenna. Um, and then this uh, circuitry here is taking the pulse width modulated output of the microcontroller and just converting it to 0 to 5 volts, which is the tuning range of this thing. And then on the screen, what you can see, it's counting for two seconds. I think in a, a more reasonable application, we probably count for 16 or maybe even 32 seconds. But every count total is being displayed. So 1312D00 is 20,000 in hex. So that's 10,000, which is the frequency of the OXO, for two seconds. So that's 20,000 counts in the space of two seconds. It's then doing 12 of those counts averaging it and turning that into a, a frequency calculation. Now you'll see from time to time that the count is 1312 CFF, which is only dropping one count. And that's an inherent issue with the way that this counting works. We're going to get one plus or minus one as a result, depending on the alignment of the rising edges of the signal and the, and the, 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 the counter mechanism. So you can begin to see how 
the algorithms to do this kind of work become very, very complex very quickly. So should I ignore a count that's within plus or minus one? Probably. Um, if the count is very accurate and we're very close to frequency, we want to make very, very tiny step adjustments to the control voltage. So if we decide over the space of an hour that we're a little bit low, we'd want to increase the control voltage very slightly. But if we were, say, much more significantly low or high compared to the target frequency, the voltage change we'd want to make would be a lot more different. But the key to all of this would be to avoid jitter. What you don't want is an oscillator running and kind of going above target, below target, above target, below target. So it's very, you could almost dedicate your entire life to this kind of algorithm. But from a theoretical point of view, this is a a fairly accurate frequency counter using the one PPS signal and then as a consequence of the measured frequency it can then adjust the control voltage so from a theoretical experimental project I think we're kind of there learnt a lot and uh, to me this is the kind of thing that kind of interests me which is another sure sign that I need to get out more